Shalom, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, and welcome to Biblical Hebrew Foundation. Today we're going to be touching about a very controversial subject. Is Yeshua Jesus God? And if he is God, does he know everything? Let's examine some scriptures. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So this is actually Isaiah 9, 6, a compound prophecy, because it speaks about Yeshua's first coming, for unto us a child is born, and then it talks about the government on his shoulders, which also can speak about his second coming, when he comes back to reign, to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. So we see in this Bible verse, Isaiah 9, 6, that it is a compound prophecy. It speaks about his first coming, and it speaks about his second coming. But let's look at this again. He's called a wonderful counselor. He's called mighty God. He's called everlasting father. So here we can see that he's also called everlasting father. He's called the prince of peace. So Isaiah 9, 6 in Hebrew reads like this. Ki yeled natan lanu, ben natan lanu, vatiye hamisra ar shachmo, vayikra shmo pele yoetz, el gibo aviyad sar shalom. So even in the Hebrew, it reads the same thing like the English translation, that this child is going to be called Wonderful Counselor. He's going to be called Mighty God. He's God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So we can see here that he's also the Father. And this would be the reason that Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 30, I and the Father are one. He was actually quoting from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And this is very, very important because everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the New. In fact, when you read something in the New Testament, it's found in the Old Testament. Maybe in a shadow, but it's there. There is no contradiction between the Old and the New. It's one book from Genesis to Revelation. And I think that it's very, very important for us to realize that here in Isaiah chapter 9, 6, it not only calls the boy that's born, the, the son that's born, which is Yeshua, Jesus, it not only calls him God, but it calls him wonderful counselor. It calls him mighty God. Everlasting father, uses the word father, Abiyad Sal Shalom in Hebrew. And this is very, very important because this comes in line with what Jesus said, Yeshua, in John chapter 10, verse 30, I and the father are one. And we continue to read John chapter 10, verse 30, we will see that the, uh, the Jews, the Pharisees, the religious leaders actually wanted to kill Yeshua. And he asks them, and I'm paraphrasing, why do you kill me? And he says, we're not killing you because of the miracles you do. We're killing you because you're claiming to be God. I and the Father are one. And he was claiming to be God because he is God. Because right here in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, we clearly see that I and the Father are one. Yeshua is God. And he will be called also Everlasting Father. So it's important to realize that there's no difference between Yeshua and the Father. Okay, Yeshua is the Son. He came in the flesh to die on the tree and the cross for our sins, to rise on the third day. Yes, but if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That means that whatever Yeshua knows, the Father knows. Whatever the Father knows, Yeshua knows. Very, very important. If we back up to Isaiah chapter 7, we can see that child that was given, God. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means God with us. And we know that that is Yeshua, Jesus. Yeshua is God. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, we just read that he's also called Mighty Counselor. He's also called the Father. So it's very clear. I and the Father are one because it really doesn't matter what man says. It really doesn't matter how people are trying to justify certain Bible verses in the Bible and make them uh, convenient or make them uh, uh, suit certain doctrines. The Bible is the Word of God. The Bible is the authority. The Bible cannot and does not contradict itself. If it says that Yeshua is God, then he's God. If it says that God knows all things, then God knows all things. If it says that the Son in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, is also the Father, then he's also the Father. And we cannot make uh, a separation of it. And uh, I know that there's a lot of teachings out there, and there's even some debates between scholars 
we respect their point of view, but I'm here to uh, examine what the Word of God says in context and not what man says. And I'm basing my teaching on the original Hebrew text. We have to go back to the Hebrew in order to understand how to interpret the Bible, in order to understand how to interpret the New Testament. It cannot contradict what the Old Testament says. And if there's a contradiction, either it was added or they just didn't understand what the translation was saying or might even have been deliberately tampered with. We don't know. But the minute we see a contradiction from the Old Testament, it's a red light that there's something not right with the text. And examine a few more Bible texts before we get to the controversial subject. And that is John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it's very, very clear that the Word is God. And if we go to John chapter 1, verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Hebrew says, And the Word became flesh and tabernacled among us. So we can see that that Word that was from the beginning in creation became flesh and dwelt among us. So we see once again that the Word is God, and God is the Word, and Yeshua and God are one. You cannot say that the Father knows more than the Son, or the Son knows more than the Father, because I and the Father are one. In fact, Jesus said, no one makes it to the Father, but only through me. We also need to understand that the Word of God is also a mystery. Uh, we don't know everything, but we do know what the Bible says. But Deuteronomy 29, verse 29 says that the mysteries belong to God. So we don't always understand everything. It is supernatural, but we have to take the Bible at face value. And the minute, and I'm going to repeat it over and over again, the minute there is a contradiction to the Word of God, it is either a misunderstanding, a mistranslation, something was added, or the text was deliberately tampered with. Whatever it is, it cannot contradict the Word of God. And therefore, Yeshua and the Father are one. And one means in everything. So the question has to be asked again. If Yeshua is God, does he know all things? And if he doesn't know all things, how can he be God? Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning, and for ancient times, things not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will accomplish all my purpose. What did Yeshua say? I am the Alpha and the Omega in Hebrew, the Aleph and the tough. I am the beginning and the end, who is, who was, and is to come. Isaiah 46 verse 10 is speaking about God, the Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and the Taf, the great I am. He knows everything from the beginning, and he knows everything to the end, and everything that will be accomplished. So how is it possible that Yeshua, who is God, doesn't know all things when he is the Aleph and the Taf, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He knows the beginning. He knows things before the foundation of the world. And he knows things that will be yet to accomplish. If we look at all the Bible verses, and I'm just touching on a few, I can go through 500 Bible scriptures to prove that Yeshua and the Father are one. And if Yeshua and the Father are one, then they know everything because they're one. Praise Yeshua. I give him all the glory. I've been studying these type of subjects for years. I am aware of what scholars say. I'm aware of what a lot of teachers say. Uh, I'm here today to examine the Word of God uh, without my personal opinion, without what I think, without uh, could be or would be. I'm telling you what the Scripture says, and I know the Scripture cannot contradict itself. There are many, many Bible Scriptures to prove that Yeshua and the Father are one from the Old Testament, from the New Testament, as I said, it's one book. I'm aware of uh, a lot of the debates. He, he was a man, and therefore he couldn't know anything. And others say only after the resurrection he knew everything. And there are a lot, a lot of uh, assumptions out there that sound logical. But remember, we are not dealing with logical here. We're dealing with supernatural. And for me, when I read that Yeshua is God, and Yeshua knows everything, and he is the Alpha and the Omega, the Aleph and the Taf, that means that he and the Father are one. That means that he knows everything. And any Bible scripture that indicates that he doesn't know everything is a mistranslation. And I, and I have to say, I mean, I've seen a lot of the articles and, 
uh, people writing about this and they, they have a, a very nice outline and it, it's quite convincing even, but it's not about a beautiful outline. It's about what the word of God says. And the word of God says that Jesus is God. And if he's God, he knows everything. And if he doesn't know everything, then he's not God. It's as simple as that. If you believe that he died on the tree on the cross for your sins and he rose on the third day, he is God. No one makes it to the Father, but only through me. These are the words of Yeshua, Jesus. So this is very, very important because often here in Israel, we have to deal with Yad Lachim. What is Yad Lachim? Yad Lachim is an anti-missionary organization, Orthodox Jews. They were founded for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to try to deprogram believers, to try to get Jews away from the gospel, and therefore uh, they study uh, the New and Old Testament. They don't believe in the uh, authority of the New Testament, but God can do anything. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So we believe that many of these so-called anti-missionary uh, uh, rabbis, Yad Lachim, will come to faith in Yeshua, and we believe that they are coming to faith because we do preach the gospel to them. But th what they like to do is they like to come to us and they like to say, you say Yeshua is God. And we say, yes, the Bible says he's God. Absolutely. He's the Messiah, Mashiach. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one makes it to the Father, but only through him. And they say, but your own Bible doesn't say that. And we say, what do you mean? They say, well, you say he's God. Does God know everything? And we say, of course God knows everything. But your Bible says that, that the Son doesn't know. So that means he's not God. So we have to deal with these issues and explain to them that those translations that they're reading are not correct. And this is a huge stumbling block. I, this is, we see the spiritual warfare, the enemy working behind the scenes, not just to deceive the church, but to deceive Jews from coming into faith in Messiah Yeshua, because they also are told about these texts. And they say, uh, the, 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 the Jews who believe in Yeshua, they say that he's God, but their Bible says he's not God. It's important for us to know the truth in order to preach the gospel to all people. And if we're telling people that the Messiah is the only way, the truth and the light, that Jesus is God, and there are Bible verses that say that he's not God, it is a huge problem. But that's not what the Bible verse says. That's what the Bible verse has been translated to say. And now we're going to touch on the controversial subject, and that is Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. And people like to ask me, which Bible translation do you use in English? And the answer is that I can't find one translation that would accurately interpret uh, the Hebrew. So this is the reason. But for this Bible verse, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, I will uh, uh, use two translations uh, here. And the reason I'm using the two, because one is accurate and the other one is not for this particular Bible verse. That doesn't mean that for every translation they're correct. For this subject, so Matthew chapter 24, verse 36, New International Version says, but about the day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Is it possible that the Father doesn't know, as we just determined that the Father and Yeshua are one? We went through Bible scriptures to show that even in Isaiah 9, 6, Yeshua is also the Father. Yeshua said, I and the Father are one. So we know that there is a, uh, a problem here with the text. And again, I know that there is a debate between scholars, and I respect it. Some scholars are in agreement with me. Some aren't. I'm showing you what the Word of God says according to the original Hebrew, according to the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, that cannot contradict himself. From what I have studied, the word son was added. It's not there. It's an italics. Now, let's look at the King James Bible, which happens to be accurate with the Hebrew and accurate with the Word of God, and it reads like this. But of the day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father. So we can see here that it says that only the Father knows. The word Son is not there. And if Yeshua and the Father are one, according to Isaiah 9, 6, according to uh, John 10, 30, according to the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, that we can determine that Yeshua did know and does know when he's going to return because he is God. In fact, the Hebrew is even accurate. It reads like this in Hebrew. Gam lo 
So it says only the father knows. So once again, we don't see the word son here added. And the reason is because Yeshua and the father are one. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. Yeshua is God. And if we teach in any way, using any scripture to try to determine that he's not God in any way, or he's partially God, or he knew sometimes, or sometimes he didn't know, or he knew only after the resurrection, that is uh, a contradiction to the word of God. And I would even put it in line as heresy. Uh, and then once again, this is one of the biggest stumbling blocks that we have here in Israel, because the anti-missionary organization, Yad Lachim, likes to quote this Bible verse from Matthew, saying, you say that Yeshua is God, but your own Bible says that he isn't. And we have to show them that it was in italics, it was added. And we show them the King James Version, we show them the Hebrew text, and we show them the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, the words of Yeshua in John chapter 10, verse 30, and we let the Holy Spirit do the rest. I pray that this teaching has blessed you as it has blessed me over the years. Let's continue to stand together, work the harvest, bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. I'm Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus Yeshua, Amen. Jesus Yeshua is God and he knows everything. The great Alpha and Omega, Aleph and the Tav. Shalom from Israel.